Good morning, everybody. This is morning prayer for Tuesday, December the 3rd from St. John's Anglican Church in Southampton, Pennsylvania. I'm Father Jay. I am Elizabeth. Thanks for joining us once again. Let's see here. No saintly commemorations. Nope. So we can dive in. Right into it. We get to pray together. We get to read scripture together. We get to read stuff that isn't scripture together. We get to pray together. We do. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we we have have erred and and strayed from from your your ways like like lost sheep. We We have have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We We have have offended offended against your holy laws. We We have have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, To the the glory glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. I'm leading. And our mouth shall proclaim not your anymore, you're not. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's do Jubilate. <laughs> our King and Savior now draws near. Oh come, let us adore him. O oh, be, be joyful, joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve, serve the Lord with gladness, gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, And his truth endures from generation to generation. Our King and Savior now draws near. Oh, come, let us adore him. We'll do Psalm 84 (laughs) responsibly by whole verse. I took it back. How How lovely lovely are your dwellings, O Lord, God of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. (laughs) My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Indeed, the sparrow has found her a house. And the swallow, and that's where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord, my hosts, my King and my God. Wait a minute. Is that saying that the birds are nesting in the altars? In the temple. In the temple? Mm -hmm. All right. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will be always praising you. Blessed is the one whose strength is in you. In whose heart are your ways? Who, going through the valley of misery, uses it for a well. Indeed, the early rains fill with pools of water. They will go from strength to strength, and the God of God shall be seen seen by them in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of ungodliness. For the Lord God is a light and defense. The Lord will give grace and honor, and no good thing shall be withheld from those who live a godly life. O Lord God of hosts, blessed is the one who puts his trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as as it it was was in the the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and ever ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. Amen. That is one of the most poetic psalms. Mm-hmm. Um, there, j- just the imagery, if you really tease it out, it's, it's profound. And the idea of, of God's 
goodness and character being reflected the way rain pools and runs from one puddle to another and and the way god's power is shown in that Mm -hmm. i i love that song i like the the idea that sparrows and swallows will nest in the temple and in the altars you know the yes the place where worship is happening but also the place where and where sacrifice is happening, where sin is being atoned for, and yet God's littlest creatures are also, they're there. Yes. Uh, I'm your, up for Your Ciroc. turn to do this. All I right. Think. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18. Okay, here we go. Oh, excuse he me. who lives... Oh, no. stop. <laughs> he who lives forever created the whole universe. The Lord alone is just. To none he has given the power to proclaim his... To Oh, it's a, it's a rhetorical question. To none has he given the power to proclaim his works? And who can search out his mighty deeds? Who can measure his majestic power? And who can fully recount his mercies? It is not possible to diminish or increase them, nor is it possible to fathom the wonders of the Lord. When human beings have finished, they are just beginning. Hmm. And when they stop, they are still perplexed. I don't know what that means. What are human beings? And of what use are they? What is good in them and what is evil? The number of days in their life is great. Oh, I'm sorry. This is all about the limitations of humanity. So he's saying... The number of days in their life is great if they... I'm sorry, what? When uh, the one that you said that you didn't understand, I think verse seven, um, when human beings have finished, they are just beginning. When we get to what we think is the end of our understanding, oh, we our are understanding. just at the beginning. Oh, when, right. And when we when we stop, we still don't understand. Right. Possible to fathom. Who yeah. Can, yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. I thought it meant when human beings have finished, as in when they died. Now I get it. When when they have finished fathoming out the right. wonder. Got it. What are human beings and of what use are they? What is good in them and what is evil? The number of days in their life is great if they reach 100 years. Like a drop of water... Good gracious. I don't know. Like a drop of water from the sea and a grain of sand, so are a few years among the days of eternity. That is why the Lord is patient with them and pours out his mercy upon them. He sees and recognizes that their end is miserable. Therefore, he grants them forgiveness all the more. The compassion of human beings is for their neighbors, but the compassion of the Lord is for every living thing. He rebukes and trains and teaches them and turns them back as a shepherd his flock. He has compassion on those who accept his discipline and who are eager for his precepts. I was not yawning before we started recording. (laughs) My child, do not mix reproach with your good deeds or spoil your gift by harsh words. Does not the dew give relief from the scorching heat? So a word is better than a gift. Indeed, does not a word surpass a good gift? Both are to be found in a gracious person. A fool is ungracious and abusive, and the gift of a grudging giver makes the eyes dim. Before you speak, learn. Mm. And before you fall ill, take care of your health. Yeah, okay. Before judgment comes, examine yourself. Yep. And at the time of scrutiny, you will find forgiveness. Before falling ill, humble yourself. And when you have sinned, repent. Let nothing hinder you from paying a vow promptly, and do not wait until death to be released from it. Before making a vow, prepare yourself. Do not be like the one who puts the Lord to the test. Think of his wrath on the day of death, and of the moment of vengeance when he turns away his face. In the time of plenty, Think of the time of hunger. In days of wealth, think of poverty and need. From morning to evening, conditions change. All things move swiftly before the Lord. Hmm. One who is wise is cautious in everything. When sin is all around, no one guards against one guards against wrongdoing. Every intelligent person knows wisdom and praises the one who finds her. Those who are skilled in words become wise themselves and pour forth apt proverbs. Sounds like the author sort of trumpeting his own. uh... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do not follow your base desires, but restrain your appetites. If you allow your soul to take pleasure in base desire, it will make you the laughingstock of your enemies. (laughs) 
Do not revel in great luxury, or you may become impoverished by its expense. Do not become a beggar by feasting with borrowed money when you have nothing in your purse. Here ends the reading. That's good stuff. Like, yeah. there's a reason why that book is known as Ecclesiasticus. It was the book of the church for a long time. Like, for, I think for the first five or six hundred years. It's a lot of godly wisdom. It really is. It was, it almost made the Bible. It was, it was like one of the, one of the ones that just barely didn't make it. Like the epistle of Clement. Are we, are we going to like just run into a, a random verse of pure heresy somewhere? So I don't know. know. I don't know either. I don't remember why it's not in the Bible. I, I, I knew once, but I don't remember. Look it up and put it in the comments. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You, you are, are worthy, worthy of praise. praise. Glory, Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We, we will, will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Ha ha. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. <clears throat> On the throne, throne of your majesty. majesty. Glory, Glory to you. you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Acts 25, verse 13. Now when some days had passed, Agrippa, the king, and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix, and when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So when they came together here, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in his case of such evils as I supposed. Rather, they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. But when Paul appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, you will hear him. So on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp, and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then, at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish people petitioned me, both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he'd done nothing deserving death. And as he himself appealed to the emperor, I decided to go ahead and send him. But I have nothing definite to write to my lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to indicate the charges against him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's just a whole big wind up, right? It's, it's interesting when you think about the book of Acts. Like, why was Acts written? Acts is 28 chapters, and the last eight or nine chapters are about Paul going back to Jerusalem getting accused, going to Caesarea, going to Rome. it It's incredibly detailed. It's incredibly detailed. It's almost as though Luke was with him the entire time. And why, you know, the start of the church, Pentecost, Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch, all these great things get like half a chapter or one chapter of treatment. This event gets seven chapters. Hmm. Why? What's... What's the question that Acts is trying to answer? 
I think, I, I mean, if you look at the very beginning of Acts, Luke says... Um, you know, for the say it's it's the same intro that he gives at the beginning of his gospel, which is this is a documented historical account. And I mean, he's writing, he he's like name dropping all over the place, mm-hmm. right? We've had Festus and Bernice and Felix, and I mean it, the, these are these aren't obscure players on the the world stage as it as it were the the roman world stage these are everything that luke is writing is immediately it, it's available for corroboration mm-hmm. it, it is perfectly reasonable to expect that at the time luke is writing these people are still alive mm-hmm. you can go fact check it and um or you could had you been alive and so um so it's uh i think it's a very clear um, it, it's a very clear attempt by Luke to say, I am documenting for you actual events. Mm-hmm. I think, as I've been thinking about it today, I think the fact that the last seven chapters are taken up with this trial yeah. in such detail, I think it tells us a little about who Theophilus might be. You know, Luke is writing Ooh. Luke is writing this to Theophilus. I think Theophilus is someone who is high up, in the Roman judicial system or in the Roman political system. I think that, you know, Luke, uh, Paul ends up in Rome. Paul ends up killed. Yes. And I think that as, as the final step of his two book, you know, submission, Luke and Acts, I think that he is saying, look, this guy, you knew about him. You heard of him. He came through your courts. Here's what really happened. Here's... And I think it's his final statement about the veracity of, of all the things that have come before it, all the miracles, all the, you know, the, the crazy stuff that, that this is the chunk where he says, and you know this stuff, and now I'm giving you the real story. That's what I think. That's a good theory. Thank you. Let's do the song to the Lamb. Splendor, Splendor and, and honor, honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is. And by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe believe in the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. 
now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will have a time of silence, and you can lift up your own prayers. Let's do the general thanksgiving. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, mercies we, we, your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks for all, for your, all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Uh, thank <laughs> we'll you very much for joining us. See you tomorrow. Bye.